so first in our agenda, we're looking at enlisting others in the vision. You know, what is your vision? I've been asking you guys this. Um, what is your vision for your college, for your organization? You, what would make where you work great? What would be inspiring? And to develop a shared sense of destiny with who you are working with. Um, we need, in order to do that, we need to share what our passion and our enthusiasm for what we want to happen and where we want to drive our college and where we want our teams to go. And of all the five practices, a shared vision is the least frequently applied, but it can be the easy, easiest to do. Um, and your mission statement that you are all working on is a, is a starting point. Um, and that's why I'm having you guys print that out and put that out so people begin to get inspired by what your personal mission statement is. And they begin to see um, how motivating that might be to them and how you could change and impact them. And leadership is about having those shared conversations talking and discussing about dreams and, and um, what do you imagine for the outcome and where do you want to take this, where do you want to take your campus in five years, what do you want to see for your students, um, you know, how is it we can make this place great. And that really requires an out loud dialogue with your people. I know a lot of us like to think and we like to dream in our head, but having those discussions can be very inspiring. And it could lead to a bouncing off point where you do get some ideas rolling because you had those conversations. So please have some of those conversations, not just in your head, but have those um, with your team and with your department and your colleagues. Because we know from the research, when leaders communicate their vision, their passion, their mission, um, for the organization, their followers report higher levels of job satisfaction. They are more motivated to do things. They're more committed. Um, we see all of these things as a leader. We then know that sharing your vision and your passion about the future has a spillover effect onto the people you're sharing it with. Um, and to enlist others in this drive, uh, there's three things that we can do. And the first is to li listen deeply to your people. You know, we're going to talk about that. The second is to discover what appeals to them because my mission might be one thing and my passion, but if I know and I listen deeply to my colleague's passion and what drives him, I'm sure I could figure out how we could both get on the same page, but having maybe a little bit of a, a different perspective um, and being able to then find that perspective and give life to a vision um, with clear communication. Listening deeply. Um, one little idea when you are in charge of a department or working with some people that you're a leader of is to really connect with them. It doesn't take a lot of time, um, but to help expedite this and to make it easier for you, I've given you this little formula. It's called Ford, and you know, historically this is not found on Road Dead, um, but it is finding out a little bit of Ford about your, your people. Um, a good place to start is knowing something about their family, um, knowing something about their occupation or their career goals. What do they do for recreation or hobbies? Um, what are their dreams? What are their desires? And, and it really doesn't take long conversations, but a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there to kind of get in touch and, and tune in with your people is really going to have a world of difference on the impact um, that, that that will have on your relationship and your ability to develop that common purpose and common ground to move forward from. Um, we oftentimes feel as if money is the biggest reward um, and absolutely not. The research has shown us over and over again that feeling appreciated and recognized um, when we do a, a good job for something, that has a higher level of payoff 
then a bonus or an increase in our paycheck. So to, in, to, when we recognize individuals' unique contributions, um, that helps us to enlist them and help them to feel like they're part of something that is bigger. They're part of a uh, common ground there, and you create that common caring, and that creates that common purpose. When someone feels as if they've been appreciated and you've connected with them, you now have that root. You now have that common purpose to move forward with. And that gives life to your vision. Um, and so you have this common ground, and now you're creating a vision for these people that are connecting with you as a leader. Um, and one way to do that is through the use of, of powerful language, expressive language, if you would. Language that is persuasive, um, passionate, positive, um, utilizing your nonverbal language to express enthusiasm and, and positivity and those kind of things. Now, I have another video that I linked to this. I'm sure you have watched it in the past. When we look at it, to understand it from a capacity of a leader, um, we look at Martin Luther King and how he expressed himself when he said, I have a dream, and this dream is to bring these people together and the common purpose and the passion that he has and the way in which he expressed himself is, is very moving. And it's not that he used words that were of higher levels of intelligence or that were so, you know, um, aw it didn't awestruck or it didn't, it wasn't something that, that you have to be a famous person to do. It was common language that brought um, passion to that speech and how he utilized it. And, you know, I was really thinking about this topic um, because when I, when I coach people, Sometimes what they say is that, you know, I really don't see myself as a leader. Um, and so I really took that to heart, and I found this video I want to share with you, um, and it's about everyday leadership. You know, and I just truly found it inspirational because, like he was saying, I think we do put this uh, stereotype onto the word leadership, and we think that it is something beyond ourselves. Um, we think it is something that is so great that we don't have ownership of that. And for this project and, and through our journey, I really want you guys to see yourselves as leaders each and every day within all the roles that you play, whether it be a parent, whether it be a spouse, a sister, a brother, um, a, you know, a co-worker, whatever role you play, I truly believe that we are best invested when we see ourselves as leaders within each of those roles. Even though you may not have a title, how is it you're leading? How is it you are guiding and building relationships? Um, what lollipop moments are you creating for those people that you are surrounding yourselves with? You know, the my biggest challenge, um, one of my biggest challenges, I think, is to be a great leader to my children. And how do I do that? What type of message am I sending to them? What type of impact am I having with them each and every moment? You know, if we have 6,000 moments in a day, there are so many just little opportunities for us to have great impact. Um, and you never know when you have impact. That's what this, that was what this lollipop leadership moment was talking about. The gentleman said, I had no recollection of that memory, um, that I had such a, an amazing impact on somebody. No recollection whatsoever. So I sit back and reflect and say to myself, wow, you know, how many times have I had a leadership moment with somebody that I, I didn't even know about? Or, to the reverse of that, how many times have I not been a leader and have left a bad impact on somebody and didn't even know that? You know, so there's the flip side there. So, you know, can you find your lollipop moments? You know, it's not beyond you to be an amazing leader. Um, and you create that leadership every single day. And that's the great thing about, you know, when we wake up in the morning, we have the opportunity 
to take control and lead our lives versus letting our life lead us down a road of stress. You can be that catalyst for creating those, those lollipop moments. And I know a lot of you might struggle with this because you might be struggling with your own vision. So how is it you bring people along with you in this journey? I'm hoping that this, the projects that you're working with, I do talk about what is your vision, what, what do you want to see happen, how is it you can motivate and, and bring people along. And some of the research has shown us that to, to, bring, to have others jump on board with you um, has a lot to do with building those relationships, you know, listening deeply to your people, um, discovering an appeal to a common purpose. You know, what is it within your vision that appeals to somebody else? And even though I may have a vision, if I'm working with five people on my team, I also have to remember what their strengths are because I want to appeal to them in a way that sparks their interest based off of their talents. So I don't just put a vision out that's a flat, you know, that's just a one per one thing. I make it multidimensional so that the people are excited and and their ignitions are are, are warm because they feel as if you've connected with them based off of their talents and what they can bring to your vision. You know, so that's kind of like giving life to the vision um, by communicating expressively your enthusiasm, your motivation, your positivity about it. All of those elements is what really inspires people. I, I guess if you probably thought about people that have inspired you by their vision, I'm wondering if they showed some of these characteristics. You know, did they inspire you? Did you want to do more and be better as a result of that person? Um, and how they communicated and embraced your talents and, and those kind of things. I always like to reflect back on those leaders in my life and see what they brought to the table and what I can learn from them to help me grow and enlist others in my journey. You know, leadership is revolution, but the challenge to the process is really hard. You know, I think we kind of get into a habit day in and day out of, of doing what we know needs to get done. We kind of do the status quo. And when we look at challenging the process, you know, we are constantly changing, especially with, with technology. Um, and with change, you know, we can, we can be scared. Uh, leaders, though, do embrace the change process. They take charge during a change. They instill it, they help people to feel as if change is a good thing, you know, it's a, let's have a sense of adventure with this. And we don't know what maybe the outcome is going to be, but let's drive forward. Let's just figure out a new route. You know, let's challenge that status quo and look for fresh new ideas um, inside and out. I think that's always, it's good, you know, it's nice and comfortable to do things, to have some order and structure. Um, and consistency, especially if you are the like if you're uh, somebody with discipline in your your talents or your your strengths, um, where or you 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 have consistency, um, some of those types of functioning strengths, you like that. And sometimes it is hard to um, give some of that structure up, but. We also know that if we don't challenge the process and do things the same way over and over again, we're not going to have change. You know, if you want to lose weight but you still eat the same way, nothing's going to change, right? Uh, it probably will get worse before it gets better. Or, you know, if you are wanting to advance your career, if you don't do something different, you know, you're going to get stuck there. So, challenging that process, and and I hope that your project. Somewhere along the lines, I know you know that your project has had this element of challenging something, a system, a process, a, a team, you know, the, the campus. It will, somewhere along the line, I guarantee that there's a challenge within each and every one of your projects. Um, and see, she, when we do seize the initiative to take charge and to make change, I don't think anybody ever calls those leaders, you know, that, that they're boring or dull um, or those situations are, are ordinary. You know, humdrum situations simply aren't associated uh, with award-winning performances. And that's, I, it goes back to, to those lollipop moments to me 
um, humdrum situations do not create a catalyst for change. Uh, if you want humdrum, then you've got to be recognizing that's where you're going to be stuck. And there's not going to be any of those real lollipop moments that you're going to recognize and embrace. So we want to seize the initiative to take charge, make change, be comfortable with it, be comfortable with the back and forth of, okay, I have a goal and maybe I didn't need it, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop. You know, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to take a new slant on it. I'm going to go in a different direction because the direction I'm going didn't work. Uh, and I know it's scary, um, but I'm wondering how many of you have this drive in you to seize the initiative and to take challenge and go with it and, and create change. Anytime change, even positive change, you know, uh, comes about, you know, you have that element of stress. Stress is, is a part of life which is actually supposed to be a benefit to us because it gives us energy and drive, it gives us momentum, it gives us clarity and focus. Um, but when we're chronically stuck in that stressful state and chronically uh, and unable to see change as a positive, then that's where, where that stress begins to weigh us down. Stress seems to accompany the pursuit of excellence, uh, but when we're doing um, our best, you know, it never overtakes us. So, but if we look at it from an, op uh, from an opportunity standpoint, it really does help us to focus on problem solving more so than seeing it as an obstacle uh, when we see it as an obstacle, I think that we are we are challenged because then we are fearful or we have anxiety about it. So any time we have change or any time that things are coming at us really quickly, seize that opportunity. Look at you know okay, what are we going to do with this new information? Um, the, for leaders to get the best from themselves and others, they must find that you know they're the moment of opportunity that is in front of them can be motivating and exciting. It's just, again, the perspective that you take in looking at that opportunity. So that's seizing the initiative. Uh, the next area of seizing the initiative is to make sure that we are uh, making something happen. You know, throughout this process, what are you making happen? At the end of the day, what are you making happen? And so we ask you, are you being proactive, trying to examine situations from a uh, proactive versus a reactive standpoint, um, taking some action, whatever action that may be, but also recognizing the, uh, the fact that we need to be flexible. Now, my people with adaptability out there, that's something that you uh, can kind of go with it. I think Connie is one that has adaptability where, you know, a lot of things might be changing for her over at her in her department and on her campus. Connie has the ability to take action, but then also within a situation has the flexibility, it has the mindset and strength to be able to switch it up if she needs to. Um, seize action rather than stagnation. And I think you guys are the best leaders in your own personal life to examine whether or not you're becoming stagnated, whether or not you are getting stuck in the muck, and whether or not you know you are be taking action and, and uh, seeing some positive results. So that's something that, you know, through coaching and or self-reflection, you know, you need to be examining. If you're doing the same thing day in and day out, that's sometimes where we are recognizing that we are getting stuck and we don't want to get there. We want to make sure we're doing things that are creating change and recognize the contribution within all of your roles throughout throughout your campus and throughout your personal life. And recognizing that is then coming, connecting with what I have come up with um, is your core. And your core really, when you are under stress um, and or you, you are contemplating a new task or a new initiative or you are a leader but for some reason you're not feeling all of leadership savvy, come back to your core and come back to asking yourself about these four areas. What, where does your commitments lie? Whether it be with the task, your team, your family, 
um, your role, whatever that looks like. Be specific. What is your level of optimism or your level of, of thought in regards to how much do I truly think I can get this done? How optimistic am I in my skills, talents, and abilities that I can get this done? And how resilient am I? If for the first task it does not succeed, am I resilient enough to evaluate and bounce back better as a result of it? And then energy. And that kind of goes along with your motivators. What is your energy for this task? What is your energy? How energetic are you to become a leader on your campus or with, with this initiative or whatever you're thinking about? This core can be applied to all types of tasks and all walks of life and relationships. Your commitment, your optimism, resiliency, and energy is your bottom line. And, and if you get stressed or if you get off track, come back to your core then I guarantee it will give you some of those anchors that we've talked about. Um, and the other element here is seizing the initiative by encouraging um, initiative in others. You know, what are we doing to promote change within others, uh, promoting a model of that can do, the positivity. And I say the word positivity, folks, and I want us not to think about the cheerleader. I don't want you to go to the fact that, you know, oh, People with woo come into a room and they've got all this, they should have all this positivity or people that actually have positivity are annoying. I say positivity and what I truly think about is a person that looks at situations with optimism, a person that does have a can-do attitude, a person that is willing to work with others, um, a person that is proactive. So that is the person that, that to me has positivity and that is helping others um, work through that change and being a great leader and leading by example. So um, that can-do attitude is very important, can-do, can-do. Um, providing opportunities for people to gain mastery uh, one step at a time. You know what, I, I, I think of this as being a, a process of um, onboarding in which if you think about onboarding, you think about that being a short-term training model, if you would, for your new hires um, and or transfer employees. And I truly think, um, I don't know what your, guys, what your thoughts are, but I believe that that onboarding is not something that should end after a couple of months. It is something that is, you know, the training of a job is ever, it's ongoing. It's, the onboarding is always on. Um, it's not something that should end. So. You know, it's just like life, continually changed and, and learn and grow. When we say, okay, you know everything you need to know about your job, we are actually then stifling them not to take initiative and not to seek out um, and grow in their positions. Um, you know, just to make change for change's sake is not very fun. It, it creates a lot of stress. Um, and we want to make sure that we're making that even the leadership projects that you guys are involved in, what is the impact? Why is this meaningful? What is it going to do for our campus? How is it going to make change in the present and in the future? Revolutionary people are thinking about the future. We are creating a better way of being by thinking about the impact that we have every single day with our people. So leaders are the individuals that during times of difficulty, um, if you would, conflict, change, whatever that looks like, uh, they look to figure out a reason why making change at this point will help us. Um, they make uh, the road ahead, they pave it with purpose and meaning. Um, they find meaning even when really there's no good outcome, but how is it I can get to the other side? You know, um, we know both option A and option B are not necessarily what we want, but those are our choices. So how can we then move ahead and pursue with meaning and passion as a leader? And you see challenge and you see change, and as leaders you see as, wow, what can we do with this? What are our options? What are our opportunities? That's a leader's mindset. Um, 
who mobilizes at your campus when there is uncertainty? You know, who do you look for as a mobilizer? Are you one of those mobilizers? Um, what gets you going in the morning? Why, why are you enthusiastic? What motivates you to do your best day in and day out? And why do people push their own limits? Why are you guys going above and beyond the expectations of your job by taking on this leadership project? Because you are pushing yourself to create your, to go beyond your comfort zone. And that is, is extraordinary. But at the end of the day, the people that we are working with that are side by side next to us, they want the same things for themselves, but they may not know how to get there. Um, at the end of the day, when you go to bed, I, I really like for you to reflect on what made your day meaningful. And normally, it's that you have led your day with purpose. You have been impactful. Um, you have been of value. So to challenge with purpose is what inspires people, not just any challenge motivates people. We need to know what motivates who's near us. We don't just want to challenge a system for no reason. We want to challenge, we want it to have purpose. Um, for that people to have buy-in. So we challenge the, with purpose, not just any challenge motivates people. Again, we do want to spark the interest of the people we're challenging based off of their talents. And, you know, I go back to Jake and his students, and I think he does an exemplary job of challenging each student individually. You know, he does a good job of doing the 10 minute check and getting to know them and then also getting to know what what kind of ignites them and what inspires them and helps them to grow and, and change. Um, it's not about challenge for challenge sake, you know, it's about again making it meaningful. We don't just want to be doing things and have no outcome or no impact um, and no value. You know, we want to be again adding that value. Um, to challenge the purpose, they, we take action um, and make it meaningful to that person. Um, realizing that, that meaning comes from inside, that, that again, that intrinsic motivator that we did talk about. Um, what is rewarding is what gets done. So what, what is rewarding for somebody is what's going to get done. And we have to know what that is. Um, and you can never pay people enough to care because that is what we are looking at that connects us, that drives us, that gives us uniformity, um, and that makes people passionate to go above and beyond. Tapping into the hearts and the minds and the strengths and the core of our people is what will be key to moving into the future with organizational change. I'm not sure if any of you have been, had the opportunity to read this book. It's great. This would be a great leadership development resource for you to read. Um, but the AMP stands for um, identifying the, the biggest motivators within our people that we are leading, which is through autonomy, which is the ability to manage um, their time and their behaviors, mastery, is their opportunity to better um, understand meaning of, for that person the map, and be able to understand full mastery of their skills, uh, purpose, the opportunity to work at something to further a goal that reflects their values. Um, so Daniel Pink speaks to these as being our biggest motivators in working with people, as well as motivating ourselves. Um, you know, let's just not think about leading others, but we also then think about leading ourselves. And that AMP is very important in our own life.